Today we're going to do things a little bit different. You're going to still watch this video about the nitrogen cycle, but instead of when you're finished doing your five sentence summary, today what I want you guys to do is grab your nitrogen cycle notes that you picked up in class, and I want you guys to fill in your notes as we go. So, the nitrogen cycle, kind of the second cycle that we're, we've been talking about after the water cycle. First thing I want you guys to understand is the nitro nitrogen in the nitrogen cycle is extremely important. Uh, nitrogen is essential for anything that's living. Plants, animals, we all need nitrogen. Now, the question is, why in the world do we need that nitrogen? And, well, I'll give you three letters. D, N, A. Okay, if you look at those three letters, this N right here revolves around nitrogen. Without nitrogen from the nitrogen cycle, we would not be here. So understanding the nitrogen cycle is going to be very, very important for understanding why we're here. Now the question becomes right here, how do we get that nitrogen? If you don't know, nitrogen usually found as N2, so there's two of them together, they like to bond together, is the most abundant gas in our atmosphere. There's 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. Um, that's a lot. So you might think that it's super duper easy for us to get that nitrogen, but we can't get that nitrogen. We can't use that nitrogen that's in the atmosphere. We can't do that just by breathing it in. Even though we are breathing it in every time we breathe, because there's 78% of what we breathe in is, is nitrogen, we're only using the oxygen. We just breathe that nitrogen right back out. So what we have to do is we have to get our nitrogen through plants, things that we eat. All right. So key things to remember from this slide. We need nitrogen. If we weren't if we didn't have nitrogen, we wouldn't be around. There's a ton of it in the atmosphere, but we can't use that nitrogen right away. We have to get it through plants. So the next question should be, how do plants get it? Here we go. Plants rely on bacteria. Right here. These are your new best friend. BFFs. You'll see why here in just a second. So your new best friend forever is bacteria. What's going to happen is there's going to be that N2 in the atmosphere up here and what it's going to do is it's going to attach to the rain droplets in clouds and it's going to fall to the earth. Once it falls to the earth what's going to happen is that N2 is going to be converted into something called ammonia NH4. Now that NH4 ammonia is toxic. You've probably heard of that before. You don't want to drink or get close to ammonia. It's bad for us. So, again, we've got a problem. We can't use the nitrogen that's available. The plants can't use that ammonia. So, we turn to our BFFs, bacteria. There's, a, there's another kind down in the soil down here that's going to uh, turn that ammonia, this stuff right here, that ammonia, and turn it into nitrates. Okay, Those nitrates, NO3, now, ding, 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 this is the stuff we can use. So what the plants are going to do is they're going to absorb that NO3, NO3, into their roots and they're going to, it's going to become a part of their system. It's going to become part of their DNA and their proteins down here. Okay. So once it's part of their DNA, DNA and their proteins, this guy right here can eat the, um, eat the plants and then it becomes part of, of that guy over there. Okay, so plants store the nitrates in their DNA and proteins and then pass it along to animals when they're eaten or uh, they can pass the, the uh, nitrogen back into the earth when they decompose. So a couple things to take away. That N2 that's in the atmosphere is going to get into the ground, still can't use it. We're going to rely on our newfound BFFs, bacteria, to convert the N2 to ammonia. Ammonia bad, we can't use that still, plants can't use that yet. What we need is a different BFF bacteria to turn the toxic ammonia into nitrates. And then the nitrates um, can be taken up by the plants. Once they're in the plants, the plants use the, that to make DNA and proteins. And then other things can eat the plants to get the nitrogen that they need. 
as the cycle continues, animals then can release nitrates back into the other spheres when they do a couple things. One of them is gross. The first one is when they, yep, make waste. So there's a lot of nitrogen in uh, manure fertilizers from farms. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, but also, when this guy croaks, when organisms die, decomposers, decomposing bacteria, release the nitrogen that's inside of the organism. And again, that goes back into the ground, back into the geosphere down here for bacteria to have fun with. They can turn that nitrogen back into ammonia uh, or back into other nitrates that plants can use again. Okay, so that waste gets back into the environment. What's also interesting is that there, there's a, another bacteria right here, this guy, that can take the NO3, the nitrates, right here, uh, take the oxygen off, so nitrate is NO3. These bacteria take the oxygen off because they want to use that, and they add another nitrogen to it to make it back to N2, and that N2 goes back into the atmosphere, kind of completing our full circle of our cycle. I think the biggest thing you guys need to remember about the nitrogen cycle is this right here, that we really depend on the bacteria. Okay, the bacteria is the key player in all of this, of transporting the nitrogen from place to place, all right? So, key things. Once that nitrogen is um, in the biosphere within plants and animals, whether the plants die or the animals die, that nitrogen can go back into the geosphere and then can be converted into other forms. Or when the nitrogen is in organisms, when the organisms produce waste, that nitrogen can be um, carried from sphere to sphere as well. In order to get the nitrogen back up into the atmosphere, we have to rely on a different bacteria to take off the oxygen, put the nitrogen back together, and then it can go back into the atmosphere. Now, you might be thinking, well, if nitrogen is a good thing, everybody, everything needs nitrogen, can humans impact the nitrogen cycle? Well, absolutely. Okay, just like in the water cycle, everything needs water. And we still have an impact on the water cycle. Here's where the problem occurs. When we have this right here, excess manure, that's a big one. Uh, usually that comes from farming. Um, sometimes there can be problems with our own waste, human sewage, and then the third one are chemical fertilizers. All of those create excess or too much nitrogen. So we got too much nitrogen in the soil or in the water, and we call that this big fancy science word right here, eutrophication. Okay, you're not going to really need to remember how to spell that, but the, the thing that I'm talking about eutrophication is you know, adding excess too much nitrogen to the soil and to the water. Okay, now I want to talk about this one right here because we're going to the river. When we have too much nitrogen in the water, this creates this right here, this nasty green stuff. All right, so let's talk about this. Nitrogen, super duper important for plants to grow. We talked about that right away at the beginning. Plants need the nitrogen to create DNA, so do we. So if you think about it, the more nitrogen that's in the water, the more plants there's going to be, right? It's going to be party time for the plants because they have so much food, right? So if they've got tons and tons of food in here, lots and lots of nitrogen from all this fertilizers and stuff that we're uh, putting into the water, they're going to go grow like crazy and, you know, kind of like right now, if you... Uh, are in your car and you're driving by rivers and lakes and things like that, the lakes are green, they're, they're gross, they're disgusting, they smell bad. And that's from all this, all these algae blooms. Okay, it's, it's from all this excess plant growth. All right, so the fertilizers that we put on our lawn can end up making the nasty algae blooms. Party time for the aquatic plants. However, if you think about it, eventually, these, these plants, this algae, is going to can, it's just going to be party time, party time, party time until there's uh, no more nitrogen in the water. They're going to eat it all up. 
once they eat it all up, no more food, which means no no more party time for the for the plants, and then plants are going to die. Okay. And here is the big problem. This is what leads to uh, problems in our lakes and in our rivers, what we're looking at at, at the Vermilion River. So once um, the growth ends, our BFFs are going to kind of turn on us. What they're going to do, that the bacteria that's in the water, um, it's going to be party time for them now. These are decomposing bacteria. They like to eat the dead plants. And as they eat and eat and eat, they're absorbing this right here, oxygen. Okay, There's going to be oxygen in that water. Okay, And they are going to eat until all of this plant, decomposing plant matter is gone. Okay, and what that's going to do is that's going to create something called a dead zone, this thing right here. Okay, because they are going to take out all of the oxygen that's in the water, all of it that was created. Okay, and anything that's in the water, most of it needs oxygen to survive. You can see what's happened to, to this lake right here because of this excess nitrogen in the water causing the plants to go crazy, but when they die, the bacteria go crazy. This is a picture of a dead zone. And the reason why they call it a dead zone is because there's no oxygen for fish to survive or any type of organism that needs oxygen to survive. All right. This picture over here on the right is showing you um, where we have the most problems um, with dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can kind of see the red, the more red the, uh, the picture is, the worse the dead zone. Okay. Now I want you to think for a second. Why in the world would we have such a problem with dead zones right here? Okay, right at the very northern part of the Gulf of Mexico. Now if you think about it, okay, what runs into the Gulf of Mexico right here? Okay, there is a river right here. It is the Mississippi. And the Mississippi um, on both sides of it has tons and tons of really great farmland. That farmland, um, in order to create all of the crops that we need to survive, you have to put fertilizers, you have to have you know, cows for, for people. All of that is creating a lot of nitrogen. That nitrogen is going to get into the lakes and rivers that are by um, the Mississippi and eventually run into the Mississippi and all of that's going to accumulate have a really really high concentration of nitrogen in the Mississippi and it dumps out right here in the Gulf of Mexico. So along the very northern part of the Gulf of Mexico we have really bad problems with dead zones. This picture is just kind of reiterating what I just talked about. We're gonna have an increase so too much nitrogen NO3 going into the water, what that's going to do is it's going to create that gross green mat of algae at the very top of our lake. Okay, eventually that algae is going to have no more food, Okay, so there's no more um, NO3, no more nitrates. So then the bacteria that's down here is going to have a heyday eating that dead stuff, eventually leading to an area that doesn't have any oxygen, which we're going to call a dead zone. All right, one last time, human impact. Excess fertilizer, whether that's on uh, our, our lawns, we can buy fertilizer at the hardware shop. We put that on our lawns. It could be from um, waste from animals. That is just going to increase the amount of nitrogen in the water. That's called eutrophication. That excess nitrogen in the water is going to be party time for our plants. You can see that nasty green mat of, of algae. That is our algae bloom. They're going to continue to grow and grow and grow until they eat up all of that nitrogen and it's gone and the plants die out. Once those plants die out, that is food for our decomposing bacteria. As they're eating, they're using up the oxygen. Okay, As they use up that oxygen, no more oxygen leads to this poor guy right here, a dead zone.